Introduction Summary The man who was surrounded by idiots. In my high school days, I discovered the ease of connecting with some people while struggling with others, leading me to ponder the mysteries of effective communication. Testing various methods, I categorized people into two groups, those who understood me and those who didn't. This simplistic perspective changed when I encountered Stuart, a successful but people-challenged entrepreneur. Stuart, surrounded by what he deemed idiots, had a skewed understanding of his employees. His narrow definition of intelligence mirrored my own judgments of certain types. This encounter sparked a crucial realization. Understanding people is a vital skill for personal and professional growth. Motivated to break free from such limited perspectives, I embarked on a journey to comprehend human behavior. The turning point was a disastrous meeting with Stuart that pushed me to learn about the DSA system, a widely used method for understanding human communication. This system, also known as DISC, categorizes behavior into dominance, influence, steadiness, and conscientiousness. The book aims to guide readers in becoming proficient in handling diverse personalities. While theoretical knowledge is crucial, practical application is key. My transformed perspective, gained over two decades of studying and understanding human behavior, resulted in increased patience and reduced conflicts. Sure, despite his flaws, played a pivotal role in sparking my interest in this subject and ultimately writing this book. The introduction encourages readers to delve into the entire content, promising a journey that could mirror the transformative experience I underwent. The use of male pronouns is for simplicity, and readers are encouraged to imagine gender-neutral scenarios. Chapter 1, You Communication Happens on the Listener's Terms The chapter delves into the intricacies of communication, emphasizing the messages are filtered through the listener's frames of reference, biases, and preconceived ideas. Despite the challenge of limited control over how listeners interpret messages, the chapter highlights the importance of creating a secure communication arena on the listener's terms. Adjusting communication styles to align with the preferences of others enhances effectiveness. Understanding others involves acknowledging the diversity in behavior and communication styles, flexibility adapting to different communication preferences, and recognizing that as individuals, we are often in the minority in terms of behavior are crucial aspects. The chapter introduces the DIS system, later known as DISC, which categorizes behavior into dominance, influence, steadiness, and conscientiousness. The narrative stresses the significance of flexibility and the ability to interpret others' needs, asserting that this is what characterizes a good communicator. The acknowledgement that no communication system is perfect is emphasized, and the importance of learning the basics of human communication is highlighted. The chapter delves into the complexity of human communication citing the American Journal of Business Education and the extensive use of the DSA tool with more than 50 million assessments. It acknowledges that people are intricate beings, challenging to describe comprehensively. Drawing from psychoanalyst Carl Jung, the chapter explores how behavior patterns create dynamism in our lives. It asserts that while individual actions can be right or wrong, there is no universally right or wrong pattern of behavior. The chapter introduces the concept that behavior is normal when relatively predictable, part of a pattern, changeable, observable, understandable, unique, and excusable. In conclusion, the chapter sets the stage for understanding the dynamics of human behavior and communication, paving the way for the exploration of different behavior patterns and the importance of adapting communication styles for effective interaction. Chapter 2. Why are we the way we are? This chapter delves into the roots of human behavior, attributing it to a combination of heredity and environment. Before birth, genetic factors lay the foundation for our future behavior, influenced not only by our parents, but also by their ancestors. The narrative acknowledges the ongoing debate among scientists about the intricacies of this process. After birth, children initially exhibit impulsive and adventurous behavior, but over time, these original patterns transform through imitation and influence, often emulating a role model of the same sex. Core values deeply embedded from childhood shape an individual's character and are challenging to change. These values learned from parents or early education guide behaviors like the rejection of violence or the belief in equal worth for. SAPTA introduces attitudes as distinct from core values, 
shaped by personal experiences, conclusions drawn from education and work or encounters later in life. Attitudes can change based on positive or negative experiences, influencing behaviors. See, core values and attitudes collectively form an individual's core behavior. The authentic self, free from external influences. However, the chapter acknowledges the challenge of being completely free from external influences, as people often wear different masks to adapt to various situations. The concept of how others perceive an individual is introduced, highlighting that people typically observe a person's moderated behavior, the chosen response to a specific situation. Behavior equals a function of personality and surrounding factors, emphasizing the continuous impact individuals have on each other. The overarching theme centers on understanding behavior and its origins. Chapter 3, An Introduction to the System. This chapter introduces the DSA system, a method for understanding behavior types associated with colors. The book focuses on four main categories, each linked to a color, red, yellow, green, and blue. About 80 of individuals exhibit a dominant combination of two colors, while five are dominated by a single color and the rest by three colors. The book delves into each color individually, highlighting their fundamental components and providing insights into their behaviors. Readers are encouraged to identify qualities they admire or struggle with, fostering self-awareness and understanding others' perspectives. Chapter 4 Red Behavior – How to Recognize a Real Alpha and Avoid Getting in His Way Chapter 4 delves into the dynamic world of red behavior characterized by traits of ambition, decisiveness, and a competitive spirit. Reds often seen as bold and driven individuals exhibit a dynamic approach to life. Recognizable by their outspokenness and directness, Reds are natural leaders who thrive in competitive situations. The chapter explores their love for challenges, competitive nature, and the importance of quick decision-making. Reds' assertiveness makes them stand out. They are known for making decisions swiftly and fearlessly, a trait that sets them apart as natural leaders. Despite these positive attributes, Reds may inadvertently intimidate others due to their strong personalities. The chapter discusses their work ethic, impatience with sluggishness, and their relentless pursuit of goals. Reds are results-oriented individuals, and their mindset is often reflected in sayings like quick is synonymous with good. One noteworthy aspect of Reds is their fearlessness when it comes to making decisions. While others may hesitate and weigh risks, Reds boldly make controversial decisions. Their determination is unyielding, and once they decide, it's full steam ahead. This fearlessness enables them to tackle tough choices and tricky decisions without hesitation. Many successful entrepreneurs are Reds as they possess the strength of character needed to navigate the uncertainties of starting new ventures. Reds are groundbreaking and strong-willed, often described as both results-oriented and decisive. They don't settle for doing things the conventional way. Instead, they seek innovative solutions. Reds aren't afraid to make decisions when others hesitate, showcasing their determination to move forward. Their fearlessness dares them to tackle things that make others hesitate. Another characteristic of Reds is their ability to adjust their viewpoints. While they hold strong opinions, they are quick thinkers and can shift their ground when a better solution arises. This flexibility and willingness to change create a strong dynamism. However, this constant need for change may be stressful for some. Red's relentless pursuit of progress and improvement is evident in their approach to decision making. They don't stick to their original points of view when a better solution is available. Their quick thinking and adaptability contribute to a strong sense of dynamism and flexibility. However, the downside is that Reds may get bored with the status quo quickly, leading to frequent changes that others may find challenging to keep up with. In conclusion, the chapter provides insights into the various facets of Red behavior, whether it's their competitive spirit, fearless decision-making, or relentless pursuit of progress, Reds play a vital role in shaping dynamic environment. The chapter also touches on the potential challenges associated with their strong personalities, emphasizing the need for understanding and effective communication when dealing with Reds. Chapter 5 Yellow Behavior How to Recognize Someone Whose Head is in the Clouds and Get Him Back to Reality Again Chapter 5 introduces yellow behavior characterized by boundless optimism, enthusiasm, 
and a focus on building relationships. Yellows are depicted as sanguine individuals, always seeking enjoyment and turning every moment into a delightful experience. The chapter outlines the characteristics of yellows, including their talkative nature, positive outlook, and ability to connect with people effortlessly. Yellows are described as individuals who live for the joy of living. Their optimistic and cheerful disposition sets them apart, and they are often the life of the party. The author emphasizes their ability to find opportunities for enjoyment in any situation, reflecting a mindset that perceives life as a banquet to be savored. Yellows are driven by merriment and laughter, and their infectious positivity makes it challenging for others to remain upset for long. The chapter provides guidance on recognizing yellows. They are the ones who talk incessantly, giving answers more than asking questions. Their responses often involve storytelling, even if unrelated to the topic at hand. Yellows are known for their unshakable positive attitudes, making them immensely popular. They create a lively and enjoyable atmosphere, making people feel important and cherished. The author shares personal anecdotes about a sister, Marita, who embodies yellow behavior. Marita's easygoing nature and entertaining anecdotes contribute to her likability. Yellows, like Marita, have a unique ability to connect with everyone they meet, making them exceptionally well-liked individuals. The chapter highlights Yellow's touchy-feely nature and their quick decision-making, often based on feelings rather than rational reasoning. Despite potential challenges, Yellow's popularity stems from their energy, curiosity, and the ability to keep people engaged and entertained. Yellows excel at creating relationships and are described as outgoing and persuasive. They see most people as pleasant, even strangers, considering them as friends they haven't met yet. The chapter emphasizes their focus on social togetherness and their knack for maintaining a vast network of friends and acquaintances. Unlimited optimism and enthusiasm define yellow behavior. Yellows concentrate on finding opportunities and solutions, maintaining a positive outlook on life. The chapter introduces anecdotes about a friend, Mickey, whose life is filled with challenges, yet he remains remarkably upbeat. Yellows, like Mickey, have an infectious energy that spreads joy and warmth. Yellows are depicted as resourceful individuals who see solutions where others may not. They possess a unique ability to think outside the box with a fast-paced intellect that may be challenging for others to keep up with. The chapter highlights their creativity and courage to try new things. The persuasive nature of yellows is explored with an emphasis on their ability to convince and inspire. Yellows use vivid and colorful language, appealing to the senses and creating a lasting impression. The author shares an example of a sales director, Marianne, whose ability to inspire others is attributed to her optimistic outlook. The chapter concludes by underlining the importance of relationships for yellows. Their inspirational traits thrive on building connections and they consider relationships crucial, especially in a business context. Yellows are described as individuals who know everyone, maintaining a wide circle of acquaintances and friends. In summary, Chapter 5 provides a comprehensive exploration of yellow behavior, emphasizing their positive and enthusiastic nature, knack for building relationships, and their unique ability to inspire and persuade others. Chapter 6, Green Behavior why change is so difficult and how to get around it. The chapter discusses the characteristics of individuals with green personality traits and explores why change can be challenging for them. The green personality is described as the most balanced among the four colors. Greens are calm, easygoing, and often counterbalance the more extreme traits of other colors. They are often described as phlegmatic or earth people. Greens are not as driven as reds, not as resourceful as yellows and not as orderly as blues. They are easy to deal with, don't demand much, and are known for their passive nature. In social situations, greens don't stand out as much as other colors. They contribute serenity to a situation and their calm demeanor helps balance more extreme behaviors. Greens are described as kind, relational, and excellent listeners. They are willing to help others and invest in relationships. They are often found in roles where they can assist and support others, such as in the public sector. While greens are generally tolerant and easygoing, change is not their greatest strength. They prefer stability and predictability, and introducing change requires proper justification and time for them to adapt. Greens are considered some of the best listeners genuinely interested in others. 
They prioritize relationships and are willing to invest time and effort in supporting those around them. In a team or group setting, Greens prioritize the collective well-being over individual needs. They are team players putting the group's interests before their own. Greens are reliable and fulfill their commitments. They value stability and are willing to contribute to the team's success. If they commit to doing something, they will do it within the expected time frame. When faced with organizational changes or challenges, Greens tend to remain calm and carry on without making a fuss. They may not like conflict and prefer to maintain stability. Greens may find it difficult to say no and often prioritize others over themselves. They are willing to help even if it means putting their needs on the back burner. The chapter emphasizes that understanding and appreciating green behavior is essential for effective communication and collaboration within a team or organization. While greens may resist change initially, with proper justification and time, they can adapt to new situations. In conclusion, greens contribute to a harmonious and balanced team, dynamic, valuing relationships and stability. Adapting to change may take time, but greens' reliability and genuine concern for others make them valuable team members. Chapter 7, Blue Behavior. In pursuit of perfection, Chapter 7 explores blue behavior, focusing on individuals characterized by their analytical, detail-oriented, and reserved nature. Blues are described as those who prioritize organization and analysis in various aspects of life. They often observe, classify, and evaluate their surroundings. Blues are portrayed as individuals who possess a vast amount of knowledge and facts. They are known for correcting inaccuracies and presenting information in a meticulous manner. Their expertise is often conveyed modestly without the need for attention or recognition. Blues are depicted as unassuming know-it-alls, preferring to share their knowledge when asked rather than unsolicited. The chapter emphasizes Blue's cautious and safety-first approach, illustrating their tendency to thoroughly examine details. Blue's decision-making process is explored, highlighting their logical thinking and aversion to risk-taking. Blues may prioritize the process over the outcome, ensuring that all details are meticulously addressed. A significant aspect of Blue behavior is their pursuit of perfection. Blues are seen as quality-conscious individuals who insist on correctness and precision. The chapter delves into their approach to problem-solving, where they seek to understand the root cause of issues rather than addressing surface-level problems. Blue's communication style is examined, emphasizing their preference for silence and introversion. While they may not speak unnecessarily, when they do, their words are well thought out and meaningful. The chapter concludes by presenting notable individuals such as Bill Gates and Albert Einstein as examples of successful blues who have leveraged their meticulous nature for achievement. Chapter 8, No One is Completely Perfect, Strengths and Weaknesses. In Chapter 8's introduction, the author explores the theme of imperfection among individuals, emphasizing that no one is completely perfect. The chapter focuses on understanding and acknowledging both strengths and weaknesses. The author suggests that certain people may be challenging to understand, especially those who behave differently from oneself. The text introduces the core behavior patterns represented by different colors, emphasizing the contrast between reds, yellows, greens, and blues. Reds are depicted as quick and commanding but can become control freaks. Yellows are described as amusing and creative but may monopolize conversations. Greens are seen as pleasant but can be wishy-washy and indecisive. Blues are portrayed as calm and level-headed, but their critical thinking can turn into suspicion. The author addresses the perception of weaknesses, noting that how individuals are perceived often depends on the observer's perspective. The text acknowledges the subjectivity of evaluating behavior patterns and emphasizes that the discussion focuses on how people might perceive weaknesses even if the person's intention was different. Additionally, the author points out that each color tends to evaluate themselves differently with reds and yellows tending to inflate strengths and ignore weaknesses, while greens and blues exaggerate weaknesses and sometimes overlook strengths. The chapter sets the stage for a deeper exploration of how each color perceives its weaknesses and strengths with a reminder of the subjectivity involved in such evaluations. How red people are perceived the author explores the perceptions of Red's individuals with a dominant personality style characterized by traits such as assertiveness, impatience, and a focus on tasks rather than relationships. The narrator suggests that external opinions about Red's differ from how Red's perceive themselves. 
According to the author's research, many people view Reds as surrounded by idiots due to their fiery temper and a propensity for heated discussions. While Reds claim to value honesty and straightforward communication, others may find it challenging to express their opinions without facing a confrontational response. The perception of Reds as belligerent, arrogant, and egotistical is discussed highlighting the potential for conflicts arising from their direct communication style. The narrative delves into specific instances illustrating red behavior. Reds are depicted as rule breakers, willing to take shortcuts to achieve results, even if it means violating regulations. It's the story of Bjorn, a red who frequently lost his driving license due to his liberal approach to speed limits, serves as an example of red's impatience and their inclination to bypass established procedures for efficiency. The text suggests that Reds may be misunderstood due to their blunt communication style, which can come across as aggressive. The author explores the cultural aspects of communication, noting that in certain countries, confrontational behavior is more acceptable than in others. Reds are portrayed as individuals who readily engage in debates, raise their voices, and express themselves bluntly, which can be perceived as threatening. The need for control is discussed as a defining characteristic of Reds. The desire to influence specific issues and ensure things are done their way is attributed to a belief that Reds know best. This need for control, however, can lead to others feeling restricted or wanting to escape from a Reds influence. The author emphasizes that Reds are task-oriented and may be perceived as lacking in relational sensitivity. An example is given where a Red, despite showing initial concern, loses interest in a conversation once assured that everything is fine reinforcing the idea that Reds prioritize efficiency over maintaining prolonged relational interactions. Egotism is explored in the context of Reds' communication style, where the frequent use of the pronoun is highlighted. Reds are portrayed as assertive individuals who fight for their interests and assert that their opinions are superior. This behavior, while contributing to their success in discussions, can lead to negative perceptions, loss of friendships, and isolation. The narrative concludes by illustrating a scenario where a red confronted with a colleague's struggles responds with tough love, reinforcing the belief that reds often think they are surrounded by individuals of lower competence. Overall, the author seeks to shed light on the complex nature of reds' behavior, acknowledging the potential for misunderstandings and conflicts arising from their distinctive personality traits. How yellow people are perceived? The passage explores how individuals with a personality characterized as yellow are perceived by others and delves into the challenges they face. The portrayal of yellows is initially described as funny, entertaining, and divinely positive, but the narrative emphasizes that this is their own interpretation. Others may view them as selfish, superficial, overly self-confident, bad listeners. When criticized, a yellow might either feel genuinely hurt or engage in a spirited argument. However, the criticism does not seem to torment them in the long run, as they tend to have a selective memory, forgetting their faults and shortcomings with their positive ease. The text then focuses on communication skills, stating that yellows are exceptionally good communicators, their ability to find words, express themselves, and tell stories is highlighted. However, this can become excessive, leading to a lack of self-awareness about when to conclude a conversation. The tendency for yellows to dominate discussions and lack good listening skills is illustrated through anecdotes and examples. The passage further explores the struggles yellows face, such as an inability to concentrate, a dislike for structured work, and a tendency to avoid details. Yellows are portrayed as launching projects with enthusiasm, but struggling to finish them completely. Their carefree attitude towards time and a preference for novelty over routine are discussed, emphasizing potential consequences for project implementation. Finally, the passage touches on the perceived selfishness of yellows due to their dialogue centered around themselves. The narrative suggests that yellows might interrupt conversations to redirect the topic towards their interest. A lack of interest in others' perspectives and a tendency to speak rather than listen contribute to the perception of yellows as bad listeners. In summary, the passage provides an in-depth exploration of the characteristics and challenges associated with individuals exhibiting yellow traits, particularly focusing on their communication style, concentration issues, and potential selfishness in dialogue. How green people are perceived. The text explores the perceptions and behaviors associated with individuals characterized as greens, 
using a color coding system to represent different personality traits. Greens are portrayed as pleasant, friendly, and caring individuals. However, the ambivalence in others' perceptions arises from certain characteristics, such as their tendency to avoid conflict by saying yes but meaning no. This silent resistance can lead to misunderstandings, with some viewing Greens as dishonest, even though their intention is merely to avoid conflict. One notable trait is the Greens' resistance to change. They are depicted as individuals who, even when understanding the need for change, might refuse and maintain their current stance. This unwillingness to change is contrasted with blues who seek more facts before for much greens, on the other hand, wait for the right feeling before making any changes, making them appear stubborn and indifferent to those around them. The text illustrates how this resistance to change in passivity can hinder personal and professional growth. Greens are described as individuals who rarely make the first move, leading to a perception of disinterest and lack of engagement. The narrative suggests that Greens prefer doing nothing and staying in their comfort zones, often hindering progress or success. The concept of Greens avoiding conflict is emphasized with a reluctance to take a position on sensitive issues. They are described as expressing themselves ambiguously to avoid taking responsibility and risking their good name. This tendency to be indirect in communication is attributed to the Greens' desire to maintain relationships and avoid unnecessary conflict. The text also delves into the difficulty of introducing changes within groups dominated by Greens. Their resistance to change is portrayed as a significant stumbling block, with Greens expressing concerns about the unknown and a preference for the status quo. A major dilemma highlighted is Greens' aversion to conflict. The narrative explores two perspectives on conflict resolution, the harmony outlook and the conflict outlook. Greens are shown to lean heavily toward the harmony outlook, preferring to maintain the appearance of agreement even when conflicts exist. This avoidance of confrontation is depicted as a major challenge, leading to issues such as stubbornness and resistance to change. In summary, the text provides an in-depth exploration of the characteristics, perceptions, and behaviours associated with individuals identified as Greens. It highlights the challenges and complexities that arise from that aversion to conflict, resistance to change, and preference for maintaining harmony in relationships. How blue people are perceived. The section discusses how individuals with blue personality traits are perceived and the challenges they face in various aspects of their lives. Blues are often seen as perfectionists, and despite their meticulous nature, they receive criticism for being evasive, defensive, and reserved. The list of perceived shortcomings for blues is extensive, ranging from being fastidious to questioning and suspicious. Blues tend to struggle with initiating new tasks due to their desire for thorough preparation and an obsession with details. When working in groups, too many blues can lead to excessive planning without practical implementation. Their critical and almost suspicious nature can lower morale among those working with them despite the high quality work they produce. The text also emphasizes that blues may struggle with setting limits on researching and gathering information. The story of the CEO who wanted leadership training illustrates how excessive attention to detail and information gathering can hinder progress. Another characteristic of blues is their fastidiousness, which can manifest in various ways such as aligning papers perfectly on a desk, rewriting emails multiple times, or spending hours perfecting simple tasks like an Excel spreadsheet. Blues are portrayed as individuals who never seem to finish anything because they always find more details to address. The narrative includes a story of a woman who initially rejected the idea that she was a perfectionist, but later realized its accuracy after keeping track of her behaviors based on a behavior profile. Blues' need for precision and perfection can be misunderstood as illustrated by the woman's experience the text delves into how blues interact with others, highlighting their need for personal space and reluctance to engage in small talk. Blues may come across as cold-hearted and distant, and their preference for solitude and immediate family may lead others to perceive them as boring. A significant aspect of blues' behavior is their need for control, often seen in double-checking and triple-checking information. This behavior stems from a lack of trust in others, leading blues to rely on themselves and their own eyes for confirmation. This need for confirmation can result in time-consuming processes and strain relationships. 
Overall, the section provides a detailed exploration of the perceptions and challenges associated with individuals exhibiting blue personality traits, offering insights into their behavior in various contexts. Chapter 9 Learning New Things How to Use What You've Learned Chapter 9 of the book emphasizes the challenges and importance of learning new things, particularly the classification of behavior using the DSA Language EIPD Institute for personal development. The author shares personal experiences and insights into the learning process, highlighting the significance of understanding human behavior in various contexts. The chapter begins by acknowledging the complexity of learning something new, emphasizing that personal interests play a crucial role in determining where to start. The author reflects on his own journey of learning about people and human relationships, triggered by Stuart's assessment of individuals discussed earlier in the book. Despite years of reading, training and certification, the author acknowledges that he may have only scratched the surface of understanding human behavior. The author discusses the time-consuming nature of learning and suggests that having endless time would eliminate the problem. He acknowledges his lack of natural instinct, but emphasizes the importance of teaching methods and learning about people. The ability to understand people is deemed essential regardless of one's role or position in life such as an employee seller, project manager, managing director, self-employed entrepreneur, parent, spouse, coach, or chairperson of an association. A diagram is presented to illustrate the transformation of theoretical knowledge into real competence. The author highlights the significance of moving beyond merely reading a book, emphasizing that it is only the first step in the learning process. The mission of the author becomes clear to promote understanding of the behavior classification method and reduce conflicts by comprehending why people behave the way they do. While the author acknowledges the inevitability of conflicts, the focus is on finding alternative ways forward and avoiding mistakes that can be anticipated. The DISA language EPD is introduced as a tool for understanding behavior described as working like any other language. The author likens it to learning Spanish or German, emphasizing that to speak fluently, consistent practice is necessary. The language of behavior is portrayed as a perishable commodity requiring continuous effort and practice. The author encourages readers to experiment with the knowledge gained from the book in real-world interactions. Initial challenges may involve incorrect guesses about people's personalities, leading to potential embarrassment. However, as readers become more fluent in the language of behavior, their interactions with others are expected to transform positively. In summary, chapter nine underscores the difficulty and significance of learning new things, particularly the DSA language IPD for understanding behavior. The author shares personal experiences and encourages readers to apply the knowledge gained to enhance their interactions with people in various aspects of life. The chapter serves as a guide to practical application and continuous learning in the realm of human behavior. Chapter 10, body language. Why how you move matters. How do you really look? Chapter 10 delves into the significance of body language, both conscious and unconscious and its impact on communication. The chapter explores different aspects of body language, such as posture, gaze, head and face movements, hand gestures, and territorial behaviors. It introduces the four color-coded behavior profiles, reds, yellows, greens, and blues, and provides insights into their distinct body language characteristics. The chapter begins by emphasizing that body language, consisting of nearly 700,000 signals, serves as a vital form of nonverbal communication. The author highlights the influence of factors like mood, situation, and feeling of safety on body language. Posture. The author discusses how posture can convey different messages. A relaxed but not slack posture can signal self-confidence, while a shrunken posture may be interpreted as resignation. An erect posture might suggest dominance or military training. Eye movements and gaze are explored next. Shifty eyes may indicate discomfort or a desire to be elsewhere, while steady eye contact can create a different impression. The author notes that liars might avoid eye contact but skilled liars may intentionally maintain it. Other facial expressions, such as raising eyebrows or turning up noses, are also discussed. Head movements and facial expressions are examined in the context of communication. Nodding or shaking the head can indicate agreement or disagreement. The author highlights the complexity of facial muscles, 
which can convey numerous emotions and reactions. So the classic handshake is analyzed for its revealing nature with different degrees of firmness conveying various impressions. The author discusses how hand movements, clenched fists, and gestures like putting the palm on the chest can provide insights into a person's state of mind. Personal space and territorial behaviors are considered important aspects of body language. The author discusses the significance of maintaining personal space and how cultural differences may influence these norms. The concept of personal and social zones is introduced. The chapter then shifts to practical application by categorizing individuals into the four behavior profiles, reds, yellows, greens, and blues. Each profile is associated with distinct body language characteristics, including posture, gaze, handshakes, eye contact, gestures, voice tone, speed in speech and deed, and personal space preferences. Reds are characterized by keeping distance, powerful handshakes, aggressive leaning forward, direct eye contact, and controlling gestures. The chapter provides insights into Red's communication style, facial expressions, and voice characteristics. Yellows exhibit tactile behavior, are relaxed and jocular, show friendly eye contact, use expressive gestures, and often come close. The author discusses yellows open and inviting body language, their tendency to use humor, and their preferences in personal space. Greens are depicted as relaxed and close, acting methodically, leaning backward, using friendly eye contact, and preferring small-scale gestures. The chapter delves into Green's slower pace, tendency to hide true feelings, and their need for personal space. Blues prefer to keep others at a distance, either stand or sit, often of closed body language, use direct eye contact, and speak without gestures. Blues reserved and controlled body language, including their voice characteristics and slower pace, is explored. In summary, chapter 10 serves as a comprehensive guide to understanding and interpreting body language with a focus on the four behavior profiles. The author provides valuable insights into how different individuals express themselves non-verbally and offers practical tips for recognizing and adapting to various body language cues. Chapter 11, a real life example, the company party. How to understand everyone you meet. Chapter 11 of the colorful personalities recounts a real life example from the author's past working in the banking sector. The story revolves around a company party that was suggested by a yellow advisor to boost morale after a particularly challenging period at work. The yellow advisor proposed the idea of a weekend getaway to a conference center with spa facilities, a gym, and a trendy restaurant. The Red Bank director enthusiastically supported the idea and offered to cover the expenses. The yellow advisor was tasked with organizing the event, but her efforts were met with skepticism especially from a blue credit manager who raised logistical concerns about transportation to the venue. Despite initial doubts, the Greens in the group volunteered to use their cars for transportation. Saving the day and ensuring the party could proceed. The chapter highlights the various reactions and concerns of individuals with different behavior profiles in response to the proposed company party. The narrative then shifts to the actual party where the effects of alcohol on people's behavior are explored. The author observes that yellows known for their lively and positive personalities became more withdrawn and philosophical as they consumed alcohol. Surprisingly, the usually reserved blues exhibited extroverted behavior, dancing on tables and telling dirty jokes. The story takes an unexpected turn when the Red Bank director, typically stern and authoritative, is found speaking ambiguously to the green administrators, expressing his affection and apologizing for any offense he may have caused. In response, the Greens confront him, expressing their dissatisfaction with his leadership. The Red Boss, feeling cornered, leaves the party. The author reflects on the insight gained from the party experience, emphasizing that alcohol can change people's behavior in unpredictable ways. However, the return to the office on Monday sees a return to the normal dynamics between the different personality types. In conclusion, the chapter serves as an illustrative example of how individuals with different behavior profiles react to social events, especially in the presence of alcohol. It highlights the potential for unexpected changes in behavior and interactions among colleagues. The author encourages readers to conduct their own research on how alcohol affects individuals based on their personality types.
Chapter 12 Adaptation How to Handle Idiots Yes, everyone who isn't like you In Chapter 12 of the Colourful Personalities titled Adaptan How to Handle Idiots OA Everyone who isn't like you the author delves into the concept of adaptation in interpersonal relationships. The chapter begins by quoting a humorous remark about intelligence, setting the tone for discussing the challenges of dealing with people who have different perspectives and behaviours. The author reflects on the common frustration of finding some seemingly intelligent individuals behaving like idiots when their perspectives don't align. This observation aligns with the central theme of the book, exploring how people with different behavior profiles perceive and interact with the world. The chapter addresses the question of how to handle individuals who react and function differently, emphasizing the importance of adaptation. It introduces the idea of being a chameleon, adjusting behavior based on the situation or the people involved. The author acknowledges that while it's natural to exhibit one's core behavior, there are situations where adapting to others becomes necessary. The author introduces the concept of emotional intelligence, EUI emotional quotient, as a way to navigate the constant need for adaptation. Highlighting that adaptation demands effort and energy, the chapter emphasizes the challenges individuals face when trying to adjust to different social scenarios. The section in a perfect world dismisses the notion of a utopian environment where everyone agrees and conflicts don't exist. It reinforces the idea that individuals cannot change everyone else and most encounters involve people who are different from oneself. The chapter challenges readers who may resist deliberate adaptation, considering it dishonest or manipulative. The author asserts that people already adapt their behavior unconsciously and proposes a more reliable system for conscious adaptation, ensuring the right adjustments are made from the beginning. An example from real life is presented involving a man named Adam, a successful entrepreneur with a strong yellow personality. Adam initially resists the idea of categorizing people and adapting to different types, perceiving it as manipulation. A discussion ensues exploring the benefits and concerns of behavior assessment tools. The chapter concludes by acknowledging that no system is perfect, and the author divides the sections on adaptation into two parts for each color. The first part focuses on meaningful interaction, while the second part addresses how to get people to take one side. The author encourages readers to understand the role and benefits of behavior assessment while cautioning against its potential misuse, adapting to red behavior, understanding and responding effectively to individuals with a dominant red personality requires a keen awareness of their distinct expectations and preferences. Reds are characterized by their impatience, focus on quick results and no-nonsense attitude. To successfully engage with Reds, one must align with their pace and direct communication style. One, speed is key, Reds value efficiency and despise unnecessary delays. They expect others to match their swift pace, both in speech and action. A direct and fast approach is crucial when dealing with Reds. Efficient communication, quick decision-making, and streamlined processes are essential components of adapting to a Red's expectations. Two, clarity over small talk. Reds prefer directness and despise small talk. To capture a Red's attention, cut to the chase and articulate the main point without unnecessary details. Whether presenting information or discussing a problem, being concise and getting straight to the core is essential. Detailed explanations and lengthy background information may lead Reds to disengage. Three, present focus. Reds live in the present and prioritize current tasks. To engage a red effectively, stick to the relevant topic and avoid meandering into unrelated matters. While reds appreciate creativity and new ideas, they want discussions to propel them forward. Any deviation from the main agenda might trigger conflict, so it's crucial to stay on track. For business first, friendship later, me prioritize business over personal relationships. Attempts to build a personal connection through small talk or flattery may backfire. Reds prefer colleagues who get straight to business without unnecessary socializing. When interacting with a red, focus on professional matters and save personal discussions for a more appropriate time. Five, confident decision making. Reds value determination and decisiveness. Indeg responses frustrate them. It's crucial to present well-founded opinions confidently. While reds appreciate being heard, 
They respect individuals who can stand their ground and contribute meaningfully to discussions. Confidence in your own opinions is a key element in gaining a Red's respect. Six, hard work is respect of Red's associate. Hard work with commitment and respect, demonstrating diligence, initiative, and a strong work ethic is important. While work-life balance is essential, showcasing your commitment through hard work can earn a Red's admiration. Regularly updating them on your progress reinforces the perception of dedication. Seven, details matter, but tread carefully. Reds might overlook details in favor of achieving results quickly. While they value the bigger picture, emphasizing the importance of certain details can be challenging. However, strategically demonstrating how attention to specific elements can enhance overall outcomes might encourage Reds to consider a more meticulous approach. It's balancing urgency and call. Cool. Reds often prioritize urgency, sometimes at the expense of careful consideration. Introducing the concept of balancing speed with caution can be effective. Providing examples of situations where haste led to errors and emphasizing the importance of a collaborative, well-paced approach may resonate with Reds. Nine, risk calculations based on facts. Reds, while adventurous, appreciate risk calculations based on factual information. Using concrete examples and historical data to illustrate potential risk can influence a Red's decision-making process. Engaging in open discussions about the pros and cons of various approaches can provide a balanced perspective. 10. Transparency through adaptation. Reds may not naturally prioritize transparency in relationships. Encouraging them to adapt to others' communication styles can foster a more transparent and collaborative environment. Helping Reds understand the benefits of mutual understanding and open communication may prompt them to reconsider their relational approach. 11. Confronting aggressive behavior. Reds may exhibit assertive or aggressive behavior, often unaware of its impact. Confronting such behavior immediately and establishing clear boundaries is essential. Refusing to tolerate uncalled for tantrums and demanding respectful communication reinforces the expectation of professionalism. Understanding these nuances and adapting accordingly can enhance communication, collaboration, and relationships with individuals possessing strong red personality traits. While it may not be necessary to completely conform, being mindful of these preferences can lead to more effective interactions and positive outcomes. Adapting to yellow behavior, in the section about yellow behavior, the author provides insights into the characteristics, preferences, and challenges associated with individuals exhibiting yellow traits. Yellows are described as individuals who thrive in a friendly and pleasant atmosphere where everyone is in good spirits. They are sensitive to the overall mood of a group and function best when happy and content. The author emphasizes the importance of creating a warm and friendly environment to enhance a yellow's creativity and positive energy. The text advises on how to engage with yellows effectively, highlighting that they are not interested in details and prefer broad brush strokes. Yellows are portrayed as decision makers who rely on their gut feelings rather than factual evidence. The author suggests accepting and adapting to their intuitive decision making process. The section also delves into yellows enthusiasm for new and exciting things. They are portrayed as early adopters who enjoy being the first to try out the latest trends and innovations. To connect with yellows, the author recommends using expressions like state of the art, newly developed, and never before used. Additionally, the text explores the social aspect of yellows, emphasizing their openness and friendliness. It suggests that to establish a positive relationship with yellows, one should be approachable, show interest in them as individuals, and be prepared to offer flattery. The author provides guidance on how to behave when interacting with yellows, including understanding their listening habits, managing their optimistic view of time, helping them get organized, and addressing their egocentric tendencies. Yellows are portrayed as individuals who talk more than they work, and the text suggests gentle encouragement and diplomacy to motivate them. Furthermore, the text acknowledges yellows' difficulty in handling criticism recommending a persistent and well-prepared approach when providing negative feedback. It advises creating a friendly atmosphere, maintaining clarity, and ensuring that the yellow understands the message. In summary, the section offers a comprehensive understanding of yellow behavior, 
providing practical tips on how to interact positively with individuals exhibiting these traits. It emphasizes the importance of adapting to their preferences, managing their challenges, and fostering a supportive and encouraging environment. Adapting to green behavior, the passage provides insights into the characteristics and expectations of individuals with a dominant green personality. Greens, as described in the text, prioritize security and stability in their lives. They often worry about potential dangers and uncertainties, leading them to seek safety and comfort. This fear of the unknown can paralyze greens, making it challenging for them to take action or embrace the text emphasizes the importance of understanding and respecting a green's perspective. It advises against dismissing their fears or telling them there's nothing to worry about as the fear is real for them. Instead, the approach should involve listening to their anxieties and gently encouraging them to face their fears, supporting them through gradual steps. Greens value peace, quiet and predictability. They find comfort in familiar routines and environments and they may resist engaging in activities that disrupt their tranquility. The passage suggests that it's crucial to respect their need for periods of inactivity and to create a balance between activity and relaxation. Predictability is a key aspect for greens, and they appreciate having a clear plan and knowing what to expect. The text suggests that as someone interacting with a green, taking the initiative in planning and providing detailed information about upcoming events or changes can help ease their stress. The passage also addresses how to behave when interacting with a green. It advises being careful about delivering criticism, suggesting that it should be done in private and framed positively. When introducing change, the text emphasizes the importance of patience, breaking down the process into smaller steps and providing detailed information to help greens adjust. Furthermore, greens may be hesitant to take on responsibilities or leadership roles due to their aversion to conflict and extra work. The text recommends taking charge when working with greens as they may not naturally step forward in leadership positions. It also discusses the challenge of getting greens to take responsibility for their actions as they may be prone to blaming external factors for problems. In summary, the text provides a comprehensive understanding of the green personality type, offering guidance on how to interact with greens, support them through challenges, and encourage positive behaviors. It emphasizes the importance of patience, understanding, and gentle encouragement when dealing with individuals with dominant green traits. Adapting to blue behavior. The passage discusses adapting to blue behavior, referring to individuals who exhibit characteristics associated with the blue personality type, likely in the context of the DISC personality model. Here is a summary of the key points in the text. One, meticulous preparation. Blues are meticulous in their preparations. They analyze details thoroughly, have alternative plans, and are well prepared for discussions. Two, no excuses policy. Similar to military service, blues have a no excuses policy. Being prepared for any situation, including unforeseen challenges, is essential. Three, honesty and acknowledgement. Blues value honesty. If you don't know the answer, it's better to admit it rather than providing false information. Acknowledge your limitations without making excuses. Four, task-oriented approach. In a professional setting, blues are focused on tasks. Avoid personal discussions or opinions unrelated to work during interactions with them. Five, realism over vision. Blues are realists who focus on practical, achievable goals. Avoid overly ambitious or unrealistic ideas when communicating with blues. Six, attention to detail. Details matter to blues. Be precise in your communication, providing exact information rather than approximations. Seven, quality matters. Quality is a priority for blues. They believe in doing things right from the beginning, even if it takes more time. Acknowledge and appreciate their commitment to quality. How to behave when you meet a blue. Blues may seem emotionally reserved, but they do have feelings. Remind them that others have feelings too and provide examples of situations where their critical approach may have hurt others. Blues tend to provide exhaustive details in their storytelling. Be patient and listen, understanding that details are crucial to their communication style. Blues don't rush decisions. If urgency is required, explain the importance and long-term implications to encourage a more timely approach. While blues rely on facts, they can also use intuition, 
when facts are insufficient. Encourage them to make decisions even with incomplete information emphasizing the importance of action. Blues may face challenges in making decisions due to an exhaustive analysis. Provide crucial information to help move the decision-making process forward. In summary, adapting to blue behavior involves recognizing their meticulous and detail-oriented nature, valuing honesty, and encouraging a balanced approach between realism and vision. Understanding and respecting their need for quality and precision in work are key elements in effective communication and collaboration. In conclusion, the key to successful interactions with individuals of different personality colors involves tuning into their frequency and adapting your behavior accordingly. The fundamental rule is to match red with red, yellow with yellow, green with green, and blue with blue. While this might seem simple, challenges arise when, for instance, a person of one color needs to adapt to another color. Additional training may be necessary depending on one's self-awareness, personal color, and willingness to navigate relationships effectively. Moving forward, the next step is guiding individuals away from common pitfalls associated with their respective colors. Each color has its weaknesses and collaboration becomes essential. For example, a blue can assist a yellow in becoming more concrete, while a yellow might encourage a blue to embrace spontaneity. Ultimately, the process is about working together, finding a middle ground, and leveraging the strengths of each personality color for effective communication and collaboration. Chapter 13, how to deliver really bad news, the challenge of speaking your mind. In this chapter, the author addresses the challenge of communicating bad news effectively. Reds are noted for their directness in delivering unwelcome information, exemplified by their ability to announce a firing without hesitation. However, the author distinguishes between personal criticism and severe news, acknowledging the difficulty of conveying the latter, such as the death of a loved one. Feedback, whether positive or negative, is portrayed as a daunting task for many individuals, leading some to avoid it altogether. The author shares a personal anecdote about a high-performing colleague Mickey, who received unexpected praise publicly. Despite the positive intentions, Mickey, identified as a green personality, strongly objected to the public acknowledgement and demanded such incidents never recur. The chapter introduces the concept of feedback immunity and emphasizes the importance of understanding the recipient's color personality. While the focus is on negative feedback, the author asserts that the principles apply to positive feedback as well. The upcoming sections promise insights into effectively delivering feedback based on the recipient's color, providing a nuanced approach for both personal and professional settings. How to give feedback to a red if you dare. Providing negative feedback to a red personality requires resilience and strategic communication. Reds, known for their assertiveness, often resist criticism and believe they're always right. The author emphasizes the need for straightforwardness when delivering feedback to reds, avoiding unnecessary embellishments. A case study involving a red sales director illustrates the challenges. The sales team, mainly composed of yellow personalities, perceived the director as insensitive and aggressive. When confronted, the director dismissed the feedback, attributing the issues to the incompetence of his team. The author employed specific examples, breaking down situations to make the director realize the impact of his behavior on the team's performance. The key to communicating with Reds is to focus on facts and present feedback as problem solving. The author strategically positioned the director as the critical factor in the team's success, appealing to his ego. The feedback delivery involved a step-by-step -step approach, presenting examples and situations to make the director acknowledge the team's perception. Despite strong resistance, the author maintained composure and refused to engage in theatrics. Reds, when provoked, can escalate conflicts to win in the moment. By staying calm, the author managed the director's anger and gradually led him to self-awareness. A crucial technique highlighted is asking the red to repeat the agreed-upon points, ensuring commitment to behavioral change. The conclusion advises extreme preparation and self-confidence when giving negative feedback to a red. Timing is crucial, and one should be cautious about potential counterattacks, as Reds may try to shift blame during the feedback process. Overall, effective communication with Reds involves navigating their competitive nature while maintaining composure and strategic assertiveness. How to give feedback to a yellow. 
If you have the patience, providing feedback to yellow personalities characterized by their love of change and creativity requires a patient and strategic approach. Yellows embrace change, but they prefer ideas that originate from themselves. Negative feedback may not be well received by yellows as they tend to take it personally and may perceive it as a strain on the relationship. The narrative unfolds with a case involving Jan, a yellow friend known for his entertaining personality but criticized for dominating conversations. To address the issue, the author emphasizes the importance of preparation. Instead of a heartfelt conversation, the author chose to present concrete examples, effects of Jan's behavior, and anticipated objections. During a moment of candor in the garden, the author confronted Jane, stating that he talks too much and tends to exaggerate stories. Concrete examples were provided, highlighting Jane's excessive speaking time at a recent party. The Yellow's initial response showcased a lack of understanding, emphasizing that people laughed at the beginning. The author stressed the need for Jan to acknowledge the problem, focusing on his talking habits rather than story repetition. Jan's initial acknowledgement was flawed as he misunderstood the issue, thinking it was about story repetition rather than excessive talking. The author had to repeat the feedback, highlighting the importance of yellow personalities, acknowledging and accepting the message. Criticizing a yellow involves handling personal feelings delicately. Jan, feeling criticized, displayed a defensive mechanism, claiming that others were boring and that talking too much was not an issue. The author strategically reassured Jan of their friendship, employing flattery and manipulation to soften the message. The narrative cautions about yellow strong defense mechanisms, including the martel complex. Despite Jen's initial acknowledgement, his behaviors returned to normal after a short adjustment, indicating the difficulty in bringing lasting change to yellow personalities. The conclusion underscores the challenge of changing yellows, emphasizing the need for patience, perseverance, and massaging their egos to bring about positive changes. It also notes that yellows may quickly forget hard feelings, making ongoing efforts crucial for achieving lasting change. How to give feedback to agree, but think twice before you do Providing feedback to individuals with green personalities requires careful consideration due to their sensitive nature and tendency to withdraw. Greens often possess weaker egos and can be highly self-critical, making criticism potentially detrimental to their well-being. Unlike reds and yellows, greens tend to wish for change but may lack the drive to act upon it, choosing dissatisfaction as an end in itself. Feedback strategies for greens necessitate commitment beginning with offering concrete examples while maintaining a gentle approach. Greens are relational and responsive to honest expressions of emotions. Communicating how specific behaviors make you feel sad, angry, or dejected allows greens to sense your mood and understand the impact of their actions. Uh, clarity is crucial in delivering the message, avoiding backpedaling or softening negative statements. It's recommended to maintain a gentle but straightforward tone, ensuring your message is conveyed effectively. Despite Green's potential self-critical reactions, it's important not to appease them excessively. Greens may respond with self-deprecating remarks and promises to change, but total appeasement should be avoided. Clarifying that the issue lies with the behavior, not the person, is crucial, reminiscent of dealing with young children. To prevent damage to the relationship, prompt follow-up with positive feedback and actions that reinforce the desire for change becomes essential. As Greens might not always accurately interpret feedback, it is advisable to ask them to repeat what has been agreed upon and follow up on the discussed changes. Greens may assume issues are about something else, considering their tendency to be vague and indirect in communication. The conclusion emphasizes the potential pitfalls of not addressing issues promptly with Greens. A personal anecdote underscores the need for clear communication as the author's failure to do so resulted in an employee's distress and eventual job loss. The narrative encourages addressing problems early, delivering negative feedback to Greens responsibly, and avoiding the author's past mistake of letting issues linger. How to give feedback to a blue. But first, just a word of warning. Before providing negative feedback to a blue personality, it's crucial to ensure accuracy in your claims. Blues are meticulous and detail-oriented, often possessing a better eye for specifics. Thus, thorough fact-checking and gathering evidence are necessary before approaching a blue who is likely to cite facts and proof to defend their actions.
When delivering feedback to a blue specificity is key, general statements like working too slowly won't suffice. Instead, offer precise examples, preferably in writing. Quantifying the impact of their actions, such as stating a project took 16 and a half hours too long, allows Blues to grasp the tangible consequences. Blues value written documentation as it appears more credible to them. Avoid getting too personal as Blues prefer a professional and direct approach. Unlike Reds or Yellows who might appreciate a softer lead-in, Blues may become suspicious if feedback is not straightforward. Offering praise before and after criticism, a method known as the sandwich method, is discouraged as blues prefer a focus on professional matters rather than relational aspects. To effectively communicate with a blue stick to concrete facts and refrain from sugarcoating messages, use language familiar to them, employing terms like quality, evaluate, analyze, and follow up. Be prepared for meticulous counter questions as blues may question the source of information and demand detailed explanations. After delivering feedback, it is advisable to ask the blue to repeat what was discussed to ensure understanding. Follow up promptly to gauge their commitment to addressing the issues raised. Although criticizing a perfectionist is challenging, doing thorough homework and presenting factual information is crucial. Blues, while challenging to receive feedback, may not hesitate to critique others. Understanding their inclination to notice mistakes and appreciating their meticulous nature is essential. In conclusion, navigating feedback with blues requires precision, professionalism, and a commitment to accuracy. Chapter 14. Who gets along and why it works. Group dynamics at their finest. In this chapter, the author discusses the dynamics of group interactions based on the four color personality types, yellow, red, green, and blue. Ideally, a balanced group would include individuals of each color to achieve optimal dynamics. However, real-world scenarios often involve individuals in positions that may not align with their natural behaviors. The author provides insights into natural, complementary, and challenging combinations among the colors. Natural combinations include blue and green, who share an introverted, thoughtful nature. Red and yellow work well together due to their shared outgoing and decisive qualities. Complementary combinations involve pairing blues and reds, both task-oriented, though with different focuses. Greens and yellows with different work tempos can also complement each other. Challenging combinations are highlighted, especially between reds and greens. Reds are quick to act, while greens may initially appear passive, leading to potential conflicts. The most challenging pairing is between yellows and blues, as their distinct approaches to task can cause friction without self-awareness. The author emphasizes the importance of self-awareness in navigating these dynamics. Understanding one's own color profile and that of others in the group helps in managing potential conflicts and improving collaboration. The chapter concludes by acknowledging the complexity of individuals with two or three dominant colors and advises patience and active listening to understand their behaviors. Overall, effective group dynamics rely on recognizing and respecting the diversity of color personalities within a team. Chapter 15 Summary Written Communication Chapter 15 explores the nuances of evaluating individuals through written communication, especially when face-to-face -face interactions aren't possible. The author emphasizes that distinct writing styles are associated with different color personality. Analyzing emails and other written documents can offer insights into a person's behavior. The chapter provides examples of emails from different color perspectives. A brief, direct email with capital letters signifies a red personality, comfortable with a straightforward approach. In contrast, a lengthy, friendly, and spontaneous email indicates a yellow personality, valuing personal connections and social interactions. The author introduces a softer, more personal tone from a blue perspective, with attention to potential sensitivity in reminding about meetings. Finally, a factual and detail-oriented email with attachments represents a typical blue style. The chapter advises appropriate responses based on the sender's color, highlighting the importance of understanding and adapting to diverse communication styles and written interactions. Chapter 16 Summary What makes us as mad as hell? Chapter 16 delves into the concept of temperament and its connection to anger. The author draws on the four temperaments outlined by hypocrites, linking them to individual behaviors. The primary focus is on how each temperament expresses anger. 
offering insights into people's reactions to unexpected events. The red temperament is likened to a shot glass, quick to fill and quick to empty. Reds easily lose their temper over various situations, and while their outbursts may seem unpredictable, they usually subside rapidly. The chapter emphasizes that Reds don't perceive themselves as angry individuals. Their explosive reactions are considered a form of communication. The yellow temperament is associated with a larger drinking glass, and while generally cheerful, yellows can also lose their temper. Their emotional expressiveness provides visible cues before an outburst occurs. Yellows may feel guilty afterward and make extra efforts to be kind, driven by their uneasy conscience. Greens, identified as patient and conflict avoidant, are compared to a 50-gallon beer barrel. They accumulate frustrations inwardly, and when the proverbial barrel overflows, greens express their anger. The chapter emphasizes the importance of creating a supportive environment for greens to voice their opinions and avoid internalizing stress, potentially leading to burnout. Blues are portrayed as having a beer barrel like greens, but with a crucial difference, an adjustable tap. Blues can release pressure through small, constant grumblings, preventing the need for major outbursts. Their dissatisfaction is often expressed through complaints, providing an ongoing release valve. The chapter suggests managing a blues nagging by asking counter questions, encouraging problem solving. The author concludes by highlighting the significance of observing how individuals react under stress, while acknowledging that these observations are generalizations and individual responses may vary. The chapter emphasizes that the importance of a situation correlates with the intensity of a person's reaction. Understanding these temperamental differences can enhance interpersonal communication and prevent conflicts. Chapter 17, Stress Factors and Energy Thieves. The chapter begins by exploring the concept of stress and its various forms. Stress is not just about time constraints. It can also result from pressure, demands, and high expectations. Different individuals react differently to stress, and their responses are influenced by factors such as past experiences and current emotional states. The author emphasizes the importance of understanding one's stress factors to manage and avoid them effectively. For managers dealing with teams, knowledge of individual behavior profiles can help navigate potential pitfalls and maintain productivity. The chapter is presented with an ironic tone, encouraging readers to interpret the content in a lighthearted manner. Stress factors for Reds. Reds, characterized by their assertiveness and need for control, face stress when certain conditions are met. 1. Take every form of authority away. Red individuals struggle when excluded from decision-making as they believe in their superior ideas and leadership capabilities. Achieve no results whatsoever. Lack of immediate progress can trigger stress for Reds, leading to frustration and a search for scapegoats. 3. Eliminate any kind of challenge. Reds thrive on solving problems and handling challenges. Lack of stimulation can make them passive and disengaged. 4. Waste time and resources and work as inefficiently as possible. Inefficiency is seen as a waste of time, affecting Reds who value productivity and efficiency. 5. Make sure that everything becomes a routine. Routine and mundane tasks are boring for Reds who prefer focusing on the big picture rather than details. 6. Make a bunch of stupid mistakes. A reds are intolerant of perceived incompetence and become frustrated when surrounded by what they consider brainless individuals. 7. Give him no control over others. A reds have a need for control, particularly over people. Lack of control leads to frustration. Sid Pay, tell him regularly to cool down or to lower his voice, accusing reds of anger when they are not can provoke genuine anger. Reds become demanding and driven shutting out colleagues when stressed. The author suggests ways to help Reds manage stress, including direct orders and physical activities to burn excess energy. Stress factors for yellows. Characterized by their sociable and enthusiastic nature, experience stress under specific circumstances. One pretend he's invisible. Ignoring yellows and making them feel invisible induces stress as they thrive on attention and affirmation. Two, become very skeptical. Yellows are stressed by excessive skepticism, which dampens their enthusiasm and positive outlook. Three, structure work as much as possible. Yellows dislike routine and structured tasks. Imposing such schedules causes stress and discomfort. Four, isolate him from the rest of the group. Lack of social interaction is distressing for yellows who need someone to talk to and share experiences with. 
Five, make clear that it's inappropriate to joke at work. Restricting humor and spontaneity in the workplace can stress yellows who enjoy a light-hearted atmosphere. Six, push a yellow to think carefully beforehand twice. Forcing yellows into overthinking and suppressing spontaneity results in stress and negative reactions. 7. Continuously squabble and fuss about insignificant things. Excessive confrontation disrupts yellow's desire for fun and positivity, causing stress. 8. Try a little public humiliation. Negative feedback in public is deeply unpleasant for yellows, leading to defensiveness and potential avoidance. The chapter provides insights into how yellows behave when stressed and offers suggestions for helping them manage stress, such as organizing social events. Sixteen success factors for greens. Greens, known for their analytical and reserved nature, encounter stress through specific scenarios. One, take every form of security away from him. Stripping greens of security and exposing them to unfamiliar tasks and unreasonable demands induces stress. Two, leave lots of loose ends. Unfinished tasks and unclear processes disturb greens who appreciate order and understanding how things fit together. 3. Hang around him constantly. Greens require private space and constant presence leads to stress as they lose the opportunity for solitary contemplation. 4. Make lightning fast changes and unexpected changes of direction. Greens are uncomfortable with rapid, unexpected changes and may respond with indifference. 5. Ask him would you be so good as to redo the whole thing from beginning to end. Requiring greens to redo tasks is equated with failure and negative feedback, contributing to stress. 6. Tell a green look here, we can't agree on absolutely everything. Disagreements and conflict in a group cause stress for greens who struggle with uncertainty in important relationships. 7. Push him into the spotlight. Greens avoid being in the spotlight, especially in larger groups. Forcing them into such situations causes discomfort and stress. The chapter explores how greens respond to stress, exhibiting reserved and obstinate behavior. Recommendations for helping greens include providing free time for relaxation, stress factors for blues characterized by their organized and perfectionist traits, face stress in specific situations. Step 1. Tell him you don't know what you're talking about. Criticizing blues, especially when they perceive it as unfounded, affects them deeply challenging their sense of perfection. Two, have the management team make a spontaneous decision, unplanned changes and decisions without proper explanation stress blues as they value structure and planning. Three, tell him this could be risky or uncertain, but we're going to go ahead anyway. Blues see risks in various situations and decisions without thorough planning trigger stress. Four, surprise him with something like, your in-laws are coming over, you now. Fantastic. Surprises disrupt Blue's sense of order and structure, causing stress. They prefer planned and communicated events. 5. Say, whoops a daisy what happened here? Mistakes and disruptions to plans are stressful for Blue's, who may become critical and closed off. 6. Tell him, forget about the bureaucracy. Let's innovate. Breaking rules and deviating from established procedures stress Blue's, as they value order and proper preparation. 7. Remind him we simply need to take bigger risks. Encouraging blues to take significant risks goes against their nature, leading to stress. Eggs mount him with overly emotional people. Excessive emotional displays are unpleasant for blues who prioritize logic and find such situations trying. The chapter details how blues respond to stress, becoming excessively pessimistic and critical. Suggestions for helping blues manage stress include providing privacy and time for analysis. Conclusion? The author concludes by highlighting that stress amplifies individuals' normal behavior. Reds become more demanding, yellows seek attention even more, greens become more reserved, and blues become excessively critical. The importance of avoiding unnecessary stress is emphasized, and factors influencing stress include the situation. Individual profiles. Chapter 18. A short reflection through history. People have always been like this. Chapter 18 delves into the historical roots of human behavior categorization, providing a foundation for the DISC model. The author explores the long-standing human inclination to categorize people, evident since the end of the Stone Age when cultures became more reflective. The Greeks, particularly Hippocrates, made significant contributions by categorizing temperaments based on bodily fluids, 
Hippocrates associated health with the balance of four humours, blood, yellow bile, black bile, and phleg. This theory influenced behaviour, with choleric individuals being fiery, sanguine individuals optimistic, phlegmatic individuals sluggish, and melancholic individuals gloomy. These concepts, revolutionary in their time, laid the groundwork for understanding human temperament. The Aztecs, a powerful civilization in central Mexico, used the four elements, fire, air, earth, and water, to categorize people. Fire individuals were warrior-like, air individuals were determined yet easygoing, earth individuals focused on stability, and water individuals were observant. Despite different terminology, these divisions align with Hippocrates theories, showcasing a universal pattern in human categorization. William Moulton Marston, known for creating the lie detector, authored emotions of normal people in 1928. This work investigated behavior patterns, pioneering the DSA model, later refined into the DISC model. Marston's model categorizes behavior into dominance, inspiration, submission, and compliance analytic ability. The DISC tool, based on Marston's observations, has been widely used for over 35 years, offering valuable insights into human behavior and interactions. Marston's model classifies individuals into DIS and C traits, representing dominance, inspiration, submission, and compliance. These traits relate to problem-solving approaches, influencing others' receptivity to change, and willingness to follow rules. The corresponding colors associated with these traits are used as a teaching aid in the DISC model, making it accessible for learners. The chapter emphasizes that individuals are often a combination of two colors, reinforcing the complexity of human behavior. It highlights that regardless of whether the origins are in ancient Greek philosophy or the practices of the Aztecs, these behavioral traits share a common thread and are associated with the same colors. Marston's research, conducted in the 1930s, has paved the way for subsequent developments in behavioral analysis. Other contributors, such as Bill Bonestetta in the United States, have made significant achievements in creating tools for analyzing individuals. Companies like TT Success Insights offer comprehensive analysis tools based on the DISC model, showcasing its enduring relevance. The chapter concludes by emphasizing the distinction between theoretical concepts and real-world applications. It underscores the importance of recognizing the practical differences and complexities in understanding human behavior. Overall, Chapter 18 provides a rich historical context, showcasing the evolution of human behavior categorization and its enduring impact on modern behavioral analysis tools. Chapter 19 and 20, I will skip them as they are quiz. Chapter 21, a final example from everyday life, perhaps the most enlightening team project in the history of the world. The managers were given a task related to their field that required collaboration, and they were given an hour to complete it. The author observed each group to understand how their communication styles influenced their problem-solving approaches. The red group, characterized by dominance, exhibited high noise levels and a competitive atmosphere. They completed the task quickly, but presented a solution to a different problem. The yellow group, representing inspiration, worked energetically with lively discussions. Despite not solving the task, they entertained with a charismatic presentation. The green group, associated with submission, maintained a calm environment. They made progress but didn't fully solve the problem. The presentation lacked clarity, showcasing the challenges of consensus in this group. The blue group, known for compliance, worked meticulously and quietly, emphasizing precision over productivity. They couldn't complete the task within the allotted time and faced criticism from other groups.